Alright, so now consider a situation like this. Okay, so let's say this is my three-dimensional coordinate, Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, there is a bridge like this. Okay. On this bridge, a man is standing and this river here, this is river here. Okay. There is a boat which is exactly below the man and the man is on the bridge. So imagine a bridge, man is standing just below the man on the river which is 3 which is located at 3 meters below the man. I'll tell you why I am on this. There is a bridge and there is a river flowing below. Okay? The man is standing on the bridge and just below the man 3 meters down is the position of the boat. Okay? Now, the boat starts moving at a speed of at a speed of 5 meters per minute and the man stand starts moving along the bridge at a speed of 4 meters per minute so basically the situation is like this initially wherever I have held this marker there is a man standing and boat is here boat starts moving this way, man starts walking this way right, so along the bridge the man starts walking and perpendicular to the bridge, yeah. the boat starts moving. Okay. Now find the change or find the rate of separation. Find the rate of separation of the man and the boat. And the instant when time is 4 minutes assuming t equal to 0 is when they just started moving so simultaneously man starts walking on the bridge and boat starts moving perpendicular to the bridge so after exactly at t equal to 4 minutes what is the rate of separation of man and the boat So assuming boat is moving this way, man is moving this way. Sir, but how does height matter? How does height matter? Not just water on a Any question with respect to understanding the question? No? So, man is standing over the bridge and he is looking at the boat. Boat is going this way, man is going this way. So, how far are they getting separated? So, the change in the separation is what we are concerned.
isn't it? Yeah. Now all I want to know is what is ds by dt at the instant t is 4? Right? This supply chain rule, differentiate this. So this will be 1 by 2 under root. By the way, this is 41 t square, right? So 41 t square plus 9 into 82 t. This will be ds by dt. Now substitute t as 4 here. So basically this will become 41. So it becomes 164 by under root of uh, 41 into 16. How much is 41 into 16? 656 plus 9 is 665. So answer is 164 by root 665 meters per minute. Okay. The problem is most of you are treating it as a physics problem actually. We are into mass class. Okay. So make use of probably, probably this may help you to solve some of the mechanics problems or you know, vector related problems very quickly. Any question, Vishak? Passion? Clear? Alright, so we'll move on now to the concept of errors and approximations and how dy by dx is helping us to find errors and approximate some values. Clear? Clear? Uh, R.D. Sharma you will find very good problems based on uh, that Ponikal, SL and all yeah. those things. So please attempt to all those problems. There is good amount of problem based on that. Alright. Moving on to errors and approximations. So again let us consider a function y of x okay. and let's say due to some unavoidable circumstance there happened to be an error in x or let's say there is a change in the value of x by delta x. Okay. So we normally call delta x as the absolute error. in x. However, there are two more related terms to x which you should be knowing. If I say delta x by x, this is called the relative error. And if you multiply relative error with 100, it becomes percentage error. I know why you are able to answer this so fast because this was a chapter in physics. Right? So because of this error introduced in x, of course your output will also change. Correct? So if I want to know how has the output changed without calculating my new y altogether again, then we'll use our technique of using dy by dx as an approximation. Now how it works, let me give you the theory first. So let's say I'll give an example to start with. Let's say there is a cube of <coughs> h 2 cm. So you know the volume of the cube will be how much? 8 cm. Correct. Now you later on realize that the cube edge was not 2 cm. It was actually 2.0036 cm. Then you say oh my god I have to calculate again 2.0036 cube. That will be a huge task. Of course you do not want to spend too much time on it. So what slight change will you make in your answer so that you are almost close to the volume of the new edge. Correct? So that is what we are going to learn now. So without recalculating the entire y, how to make these minor adjustments to get an approximate new value. Right? Please note, smaller the value of delta x, more closer you will be to the answer by this method. Right? So the error has to be as small as possible for you to reap the maximum benefit from this method. <laughs> Listen to this, sometimes it is very useful in doing your chemistry calculations also. Now from here if 
I want to know how much adjustment should I make in Y? Can I say I can just send the Y on the other side? Correct? And Y itself is F of X. So can I replace this with F of X? Correct? Now divide by delta X. Both sides. Oh, this is and take your delta x to be tending to 0 that means your error should be very very small so when you do that you realize that your right hand side becomes f dash x by first principles correct so we say delta y by delta x when delta x is tending to 0 will be nothing but dy by dx calculated at that x where the error has occurred this is important so you need to calculate dy by dx at the point where the error has occurred let us go back to that example so initially when you calculated the volume of the cube when x was 2 your volume came out to be 8 correct but later you realize that no my x was not 2 it was actually 2.0036 correct so how should I know what is my new volume or what is my error in the volume correct so at least if I know this I will add it to 8 to get my answer correct so what you will do you will use this formula you will say delta v by delta x will be now here I would use the word approximate because delta x is not exactly tending to 0 it's a good amount value so you can say it is approximately dv by dx calculated at which x 2 correct so delta v is something which we are looking out for we don't know that but we know delta x delta x is how much if you take the 2 on the other side it will be 0 0.0036 right and what is dv by dx? 3x square and that too you are putting x as 2 here. So what will it become? 12. So delta v by 0 0.0036 is 12. So that means delta v is 12 times 0 0.0036. How much is 36 into 12? 72, 36. So 4 3 2. So can I say it's 0 0.0432? Correct? So your new volume would be V plus delta V which is 8 plus 0 0.0432 which is 8.0432 centimeter cube. So I never sat and did 2.0036 whole cube. I just saw how much adjustment I have to make to my volume or what is the error introduced in the volume and adjusted it with that error. Okay? By the way, I would request you to uh, Take out your calculator if you have and just check if I do just 2.0036 whole cube How close am I to the answer? Very close How much is it? How much is the actual? 8.043277 See it's almost very close right? Right and you will be more close had this error been very very small right? As the error approaches 0 delta v by delta x will approach dv by dx is the idea clear? Yeah. Okay. So, I am achieving two things here. I know the error first of all. What is the error in the output? And I can approximate my new value by adjusting the error. Okay. So basically this is the theory involved in errors and approximations. So now we take various type of problems on this. Any questions with respect to theory? Any questions? Jagra, Ashwari, clear? Alright. Uh, we will talk about relative error percentage error as well in some of the questions. Meanwhile, can I raise this? Uh, one more thing. One more thing to be kept in mind. Many people, they ask me, sir, how did you know that I have to add delta x, not subtract delta x? Or how do I know I have to add delta v, not subtract delta v? Let me tell you, delta v is always added. Had the need been that you have to subtract.
subtract something, delta will, delta V will automatically come out to be negative. So you do not put an external sign to it. Delta V or delta Y will automatically come with its own sign. You always have to add it to the previous value. So it's always Y plus delta Y. It's always V plus delta V. It's always X plus delta X. Right? So many people ask that, okay, now you knew that the cube is increasing, so you added it up. Had the cubes been decreasing, you would have subtracted it. No, I still would have added it, but delta V would automatically come out to be negative. Okay. So you do not assign any sign externally. Oh, sorry, you do not assign any sign randomly to the delta X or delta Y thing. Let's take questions. Let's take a question. Find the approximate value of cube root of 127. Find approximate value of cube root of 127. So this was original x, this is delta x. So if it was 125, what would have been y? And now it is 127, what is my error in the y and add it to y? How much? 5.026 okay, First of all, I need to make a function here. The function here is clearly y is equal to x to the power 1 by 3. Had your x been 125, my life would have been much simpler, right? Correct? Now why did I choose 125? Why did I choose something like Right, so basically I need to make the error smallest as possible. So you can also take 128 cube root is known. Okay, so find such an x whose cube root forming is very very easy. Whose cube root finding is very very easy. And should be very close to this figure. Right? Don't don't choose 64. Right? The more distance you go from this, the approximation will be ba bad that in that particular scene. Right? So take it very close to the value actually given to you in the question. So the closest that I can have is 125, which is a perfect cube root. Correct? So had x been 125, my answer would have been 5. But because of some issue it was not 125, it was 127. Correct? Which clearly implies the absolute error was 2. Okay? Had it been 120, let's say 4, it would have been minus 1. Delta x would already be a negative number. Okay? Now because of this delta x, what is my delta y? And hence what is my y plus delta y? That is what I need to find out. So now I will use the formula delta y by delta x is approximately dy by dx at the point error has occurred. Okay? So delta y is not known, delta x is 2. This is approximately equal to dy by dx. What is dy by dx? 1 third x to the power minus 2 third at 125. Uh, can I say this is 1 by 75? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So delta y would be 2 by 75. Right? How much is that 2 by 75? 0.0266. 0 0.0266. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a bar. Correct? Okay. And if you want to be very close to four decimal places, you can say 0, 2, 6, 6, 7. Okay. So, the error in the y is 0 0.02667. So, the new value, which is what I desire, this is actually my y plus delta y. So, the new value will be the previous value 5 plus this correction that you need to make. So, just use your calculator and check whether we are very close to it or not. Okay. 
So this is how without actually calculating it, you can solve your problem. Now don't think that you will actually become a calculator because by this method. Your, your question should be very close to the known values. So if I give you 148 cube root, then only you will be struggling. The answer will not be very it's not accurate. So in those circumstances where there is an error and you think that had it been 125, I would have calculated it, then you can use these kind of What if approaches. the margin is too big? Uh -huh. What if the margin is too big? Yeah, that's what. Those questions will not be asked. 